I'm Dan Langan and I can make anything out of cake. Every week, Food Network challenges me to a brand new cake baking challenge. This is Dan Can Bake It. I've got the infamous cake box with the clue inside right here. I'm gonna open it up, see what's inside. A cassette player. These things are like ancient history. I mean, there is a tape inside, let's see. <laughs> it's laughing, it's just a really weird, Kind of creepy laughing. Maybe it's a, a comedy themed challenge. Let's see. Will you peas be mine? You make me so happy, it's miso soup. Okay, so these are these are jokes. These are like food puns. Let's see. Create a cake that perfectly embodies a hilarious food pun. Okay, I got it. This is gonna be really tricky. Creating an awesome cake that has like a double meaning or like a, a two-sided meaning to the story. Food Network's really trying to stump me with these challenges, I think. This one, it's gonna be tough. I'm gonna take these cards, try and get in this food punny mood, hang out with my sketchbook, do some brainstorming and see what pops into my mind. What I'm gonna do is create this food pun inspired cake. It's a food pun because this is a tiered cake, but it's teardrops. I started off the design with a sugar splash at the very bottom, two cakes that were sculpted into a teardrop shape and a nice bright yellow emoji face at the very top that's laughing so hard it's crying. To create my top laughing emoji face, I have a six inch cake here. It's a vanilla cake and it's actually dyed yellow on the inside so that it'll be yellow on the outside and yellow on the inside. First thing is just carve off the top just to make sure this is nice and level. I want this emoji face, which is gonna be kind of standing up on its side. I need to start with two flat sides to get that. I'm actually just gonna make two cuts and then I'll fill them with ganache. And I'm using ganache here instead of buttercream because like I said, this thing's gonna be standing up and I want it to be really sturdy. So I'm just gonna spread some just like this. So I'll just push this into place. I'm gonna flip this thing over and I'm just gonna give it a trim so that the cake fits inside the six inch board. I'm gonna take a larger cake board here. This is a non-stick board, which means I can put ganache right on top of it. I'm just gonna spread this down flat and this is actually gonna become the top part of the cake or like the face of the cake. So that's spread on there just like that. Place it right on top. And I have this edge that I can just go in and backfill with ganache. And then I'll just scrape the whole thing so it's nice and even, nice and flat all the way around. What I wanna do is create that really fun laughing emoji that's actually laughing so hard that it's crying, which I think is the perfect cake for this challenge because the challenge box came with that laughing track. I've got all my bases covered. I'm using this board right here as a guide for my scraper. So now when I scrape this ganache away, I end up with this like perfectly cylindrical cake, just like that. What I'll do is just let this whole thing chill. And then once it's nice and cold, it'll pop right off this board and I'll have this perfect cake. It'll be the perfect base for my emoji face. To create my teardrop cakes, my team cut the cakes crosswise. Then they filled those with ganache and frosted the teardrop cakes with the upside down ganache method. After they chilled, they put a straw through the center for support and then covered each teardrop cake with blue fondant. I definitely want to incorporate a lot of action into this cake. So I have my emoji tear at the top and then my two teardrops, but whenever water drops on a table, it always splashes. So I'm gonna use isomalt to create a splash. I cooked some isomalt earlier, I have it hanging out in the oven. I'm just gonna take my isomalt and I'm gonna pour it on a silicone mat, kind of into a round shape. And then while it's still soft, I wanna kinda coach it out so that I get like this drippy effect. I have this whole cake built around this center structure, so I'm just poking a little hole in the center with my piping tip, and I'll just pull that ice mold out. I'm gonna take some nonstick cooking spray and just spray a bowl. I wanna center that cutout that I made right in the center of the bowl, shape this down. So I'm gonna let this isomalt cool so that when I flip it over, it keeps its shape and it's gonna be the perfect splash effect for the bottom of my cake. So I've got my emoji face cake and the tricky part of this cake is that I need to be able to look at this cake and have a 360 view. And so what I'm gonna do is panel and wrap the cake, two different techniques. To panel the bottom, I'm gonna make it stick with some vodka spray and I'll just take some pre-rolled yellow fondant and I'm just gonna give it a little smooth with a dusted fondant smoother. I'll just cut this extra fondant away. I'll do the same thing here. I'll just spray this with some vodka to make it nice and sticky. And then I just wanna roll out some of this yellow. Cornstarch for my table. I'll put that down. I see a few bubbles. I just wanna pop these. So I'll roll this whole thing up and I'm just gonna drape this right over the top. So let me just cut off some of this extra because I don't need all of this here. 
take my scalpel again and I just want to run it right along the edge of the cake. Now I have this cake that's completely encased in fondant. When it's standing up straight, it's going to be nice and yellow all the way around. So I don't want to touch this before I chill it. Right now it's too soft. I'll pop it in the fridge, then I can take it off the board. I can finally assemble my cake. I have all of my cakes here. I have my isomalt splash piece, and I'm just going to fish it really carefully over this steel rod, and that'll just sit right there at the base. I'm not going to attach it. The cakes, I think, will hold everything in place. And the first thing I want to do is just kind of punch out the little piece of fondant. I have bubble tea straws running through these cakes. There's actually no rod touching cake. Next teardrop goes on, I'll just press this into place, and I think it'll be cool if I kind of scatter these like that. This is a tiered cake. I have cakes that are stacked on top of each other, but it's teardrops. So it's a teardrop tiered cake. So how about that? The last part here is the actual emoji face. I'll start with the actual mouth and I'll just use some piping gel just to make it nice and sticky. And I have two eye pieces. I'll let that straw hang out right there just as a visual for myself. I don't want this to go on straight. I want it to go on sideways. So I'll add these guys here, right on, down center, pull the board off the back. Got it. So I've got my teardrops. I just cut these out with some teardrop cutters and it's just some blue fondant stiffened up a little bit. So I'll just put some piping gel on it and I want one to kind of be right here. Oh, this is so cool. I love gravity defying cakes like this. It actually, it reminds me of the very first challenge cake I ever made for Food Network my optical illusion cake. This is like 2.0. Check that out. Somebody chop an onion. <laughs> so Food Network challenged me to create a hilarious food pun inspired cake. I started off the design with a sugar splash at the very bottom, two cakes that were sculpted into a teardrop shape, covered in blue fondant and a nice bright yellow emoji face at the very top that's laughing so hard it's crying. So I've waited long enough. I'm ready to go in for a slice here. I think I'm gonna go for one of the teardrops at the very bottom. Ooh. Ah, oh, that looks pretty cool. It's always so fun when the cake color on the inside matches the outside. Do I look like the emoji? <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe to Food Network and leave your comments and emojis below.